Hello beautiful Sagittarius, welcome to your weekly reading. This is your reading for September the 2nd through September the 8th, 2019. Watch this reading if you're a Sag, Sun sign, Moon sign, Rising sign, a Sag on the cusp, or you have your Sun in the um, ninth house. We're using the Anna K Tarot deck today and crystals, the stone deck, 78 crystals to energize your life. I'll be pulling one of these cards at the end of your reading, so stay tuned for that to see which crystal will be best for you to help balance your energy and energize your life. Let me get this to focus. All right, Sag. Let's see what's going on with you this week. As per my uh, usual format for the weekly readings, we're not doing love this week, though. I'll be pulling uh, six cards for you. Page of Swords. Some of you are dealing with an air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. I'm seeing some harsh communication here. Um, I'm also getting someone who is very guarded and watching, watching a situation unfold very carefully. Um, they are prepared to strike uh, if need be. So if you're dealing with an air sign, they seem to be ready to communicate with you about something or watching you very carefully. Sag, September 2nd through the 8th, please. Show me how does Sagittarius see themselves today? What is the theme for them over the next week? What is something that Sagittarius has already learned that will be useful for them to remember this week? A challenge they may be facing, a lesson they are learning now, and a gift they will receive. For all my Sagges out there that may be watching. Oops, cards are slippery today. Just yours. Not the other signs. <laughs> Sag. September 2nd through the 8th, please. I did see the Ace of Swords there, so there's definitely a lot of communications happening for you at this time. Can't tell if they're good or bad. We'll see. We'll see. Because I'm getting a lot of air sign energy coming up in your reading already. I saw the Knight of Swords just then. Uh, let's do one more shuffle here. From my stage. something here. Okay, good. Can you guys see the cards? I'm just going to raise up the camera a little bit there. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Good, good, good. At the bottom of the deck, we have a Queen of Cups in reverse. Who is this? Water sign energy, Scorpio Cancer Pisces. I'm seeing a feminine energy here. It could be yin, more receptive energy. Someone is um, really drowning in their emotions. Someone is um, very emotional at this time. Um, this is the underlying theme or challenge of your reading. So someone here needs to watch that they're not absorbing or taking on other people's emotional energy. This can be a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or Sun, Moon, or Rising female here. Um... I'm seeing someone reflecting a lot, reflecting a lot on their feelings, and um, the, the emotions can be overwhelming at times, is what I'm getting. I'm also seeing someone here that has a lot of mood swings. All right, so watch out for that this week, Sagittarius. I'm seeing a blonde-haired woman here. You may be a Sag that has blonde hair. I'm definitely seeing someone here who has blonde hair. Blonde and blue, wears a lot of blue. Okay, how you see yourself today? We have the Nine of Swords in reverse, so um, stress, anxiety, pressure. Something can be stressing you out here. I'm seeing a lot of pressure around you. Um, I'm seeing someone here who's just um, really uh, very sad about something here. Uh, I'm getting almost... 
I'm getting a little bit of shame, feeling of shame and embarrassment as well. Uh, but I'm really getting someone here who's really upset. Uh, I am seeing a female energy here, someone very stressed out about something and very upset about something. Also, you may be under a lot of pressure at this time, so I'm not sure what that's about. We'll see. The theme for you this week is the Five of Pentacles in reverse. So coming out of the cold here, um, starting to focus more on what you do have as opposed to what you lack. Remember, the Five of Pentacles is a poverty mindset. When it's in reverse, it's saying we're coming out of a period of feeling that we're not enough or that we don't have enough or that um, someone cannot give us the emotional security and the physical security that we need. This is root chakra issues. This is issues with survival even. Um, some of you are coming out of a period of being uh, financially depleted. Um, this can also be a relationship here where there's been very little talk, um, very almost barren when it comes to emotions. Um, it's been kind of chilly. It's been kind of chilly where you are. Um, and I mean that in the metaphorical sense, obviously. So you're starting to focus. There's been an upturn here, an upturn. Um, I'm also getting that um, things are going to start looking up from now on, I think. The worst is, is probably behind you, but again, the cards are saying, Sagittarius, stop focusing on what you lack and focus on what you do have and what's good. Um... Now, you may be in a situation where you're in a relationship, it's toxic, people are suffering, um, there hasn't been a lot of positive attention or talks happening. Um, this can be a situation where both of you are suffering in the relationship, both of you are feeling a lack, it feels very cold, like your needs aren't being met. So now it's time to start focusing on what our the positives in my life. How do I move on from here? All right, so something that Sag has already learned in the past that will be useful for them to remember this week. And we have a Queen of Rods. That is your energy. Well, I think that it's interesting that if you're coming up in your own element here, this is really just about being you, doing you. Um, if you happen to be a creative individual, if you happen to be um, a manager or someone that has her own or his or own business, um, someone that enjoys the uh, fair sex, that is women, um, it's good to do that now, to surround yourself with that kind of energy now. Be in your own element. Do your own thing. Um, you're fabulous when you do you. You're fabulous when you do you. Um, I'm also getting here, um, get out in the sun, get out in the sun, be in your element, be in your element. I'm getting a more darker energy here, a darker mood, so um, because the Queen of Rods is very charismatic, she radiates warmth, generosity, charisma, fire. She's in her element, you know, she's creating, she's exploring, she's um, regal, cherished, looked up to. This is a woman that doesn't have to get off her throne. People come to her. So if you're going to chase after anything, only chase after a bus. And I hope you're not taking a bus. I hope you're taking a limo. Because the Queen of Rods does not take a bus. No, 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 no. And she absolutely doesn't chase after anything. She'll chase after her dreams, but she's not going to chase after you. You chase after her. That's the way it goes. The challenge you may be facing this week, the Ace of Rods. And yes, I feel like I did see that card pop out while I was shuffling. So, um, actually this is the Ace of Swords, not Ace of Rods. We are dealing with communication here, the mind. Challenges around getting clear mentally. Um, possibly changing direction mentally as well. Um, the 
This is also about speaking the truth here, not being in denial, knowing exactly how you feel about a, a person or a situation, um, cutting away anything that is superfluous, that's not helping you on your journey. Getting rid of the fat, getting rid of the excess. Being honest with yourself and with others. The truth will set you free, right? Because with the Ace of Swords in reverse, we have a situation here where someone is not talking, someone is not speaking, someone is in denial, or the truth is really not known. It's mental fog, right? It's a lack of clarity. It's not being able to say what we mean or mean what we say or to even really know what it is that we want or how we feel. So it can be very hard to make important decisions in a, in a place like that. That's why it's coming up in your challenge position. Notice all the light in these cards. You need this sunlight. You need this light, this clarity that we just had in Leo season, but you need to continue to bring it into Virgo season with you. But like I said, like I've been saying, Virgo's vibration is lower. It's earth energy. It's much lower to the earth. So depending on your chart, depending on your signs, I'm seeing water energy, earth energy, fire energy, air energy. Your challenges around the mind this week, mental words, speech, speaking truth, thinking clearly. Um, the lesson that you're learning now is the Six of Pentacles. Transactional energy, giving and receiving. We have here what looks to be a woman who's, looks like she's begging for financial help. She obviously has someone to take care of here, a small child. And here's a rich couple who's able to help her out. So one can say that this is a mutually beneficial relationship. To some extent, there is a power imbalance though. But the woman is in need, and the people here obviously have the resources to give to her. So her needs are met, whereas these people enjoy giving. They enjoy the act of service. They enjoy the act of giving. And they're more than happy to do so. So it seems to me that in this situation, um, you're learning about mutual reciprocity. What does it really mean to be of service and to give to others? Now you may say, well, I give to others all the time, or I'm always of service to people. But in this situation, um, it is balanced. The way that I read this particular card, in this particular card, it is balanced because this person genuinely needs help. They genuinely need help. And these people have the resources to, to do it. So it fulfills both people. The person that is giving is fulfilled by the act of giving. And the person that is taking or is receiving understands that um, is very grateful. So make sure that your relationships are balanced. Look at your relationships. Look at your transactions. Look at how you give and receive with others. And make sure that it really is balanced, that it is fair. It's not one-sided. That can be coming up for you this week. That is your lesson that you're learning now. And the gift you will receive is the High Priestess. So the gift of intuition, of secrets, secret knowledge. You know something that no one else knows. And others of you may be gifted with... Uh, an occultist, someone that knows your secrets and can share them with you. Hidden knowledge, esoteric knowledge. The secret of the moon and her cycles, feminine mystique. Your gift is your intuition. Use it. What crystal will be beneficial and help energize my Sagittarians this week? What crystal will be beneficial for my Sagittarians this week? 
two. I'll take the top one. We have Carnelian. Oh, beautiful. Carnelian is actually a one of Virgo's um, birthday stones, astrologically speaking. Yes, Carnelian is a beautiful stone for this time of year. Let's talk about it. What it is, a cherry red chalcedony used by ancient Romans in signet rings. Wax doesn't stick to it. And by modern folk to ward off insecurities. Carnelian's fiery energy helps spin us out of fearful thought and cycles, uh, fearful thought cycles and into action. So here we have the fearful thought cycle, and here we have the action. You can see both of these cards show the opposite of each other almost. Who needs carnelian? The underestimated or understimulated. Anybody looking to get acquainted with their fears? Hello, fear. My name is, insert your name. We have some beautiful work to do together. Now, STFU and let's do this. So time to face your fears regarding something here. That's what it looks like. Where to put Carnelian, Sagittarius, wherever you want to inject some passion and confidence, i.e. your palate or your pelvis. Um, when to use it when you find your creativity or sex drive on sleep mode. So they want you to go with your gut here, and that's absolutely what the High Priestess is all about. So facing your fears this week, going with your gut, speaking your truth, not being afraid to say what you want, and taking that action. We see the Nine of Swords come up a lot in Virgo season, so get used to it. What can help you is getting one of these crystals, keeping it on your body or person at all times. I recommend jewelry. A carnelian ring or a carnelian uh, bracelet would be beautiful for you this time of year. And uh, you can use this energy, you could use this crystal all month long if you want. So, Sagittarius, thank you so much for being with me here today. I really do appreciate you watching and I hope you have a wonderful week. Sending you my love. And if you want to book a private uh, tarot reading with me, of course, my information is there below the description. Like, share, comment, and subscribe really does help me out. Take care, guys. Bye.